But of course, we begin here with our big story. Israeli Defense Forces striking a refugee camp there in Gaza, and the IDF again claiming that it killed a Hamas leader in that strike that was involved in the deadly terror attack in Israel. So joining us now is retired U.S. Army Lieutenant General William Troy. Uh, General, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. And we, we have some new reporting here uh, from the IDF that is saying that not only did they kill a Hamas official in that strike, but several terrorists as well. And the IDF also saying that they're actually engaging in face-to-face -face combat uh, in an area of this refugee camp. So what does that mean about how deep these IDF forces have actually moved into Gaza at this point? It's, it sounds like they've moved uh, quite deep into Gaza. And what we're seeing now is the, you know, the next phase of the operation where you're going to have this urban combat moving from building to building and uh, it, it's going to be intense. Uh, it'll be high casualty producing, most likely, um, and it's going to take time. Uh, but I think that's the phase that we're, we're watching right now. Yeah, and Lieutenant General, on the ground, the IDF has released some new video that actually shows uh, their, quote, expanded ground operation in Gaza. And in this other piece of video that we have, you can actually see uh, bulldozers that are essentially clearing paths. There are ground troops that appear to be taking up positions. There's also uh, ground troops patrolling in the dark. So what do those videos indicate to you about Israel's approach? It, it sounds to me like they, they are preparing for follow-on forces. They, they want to have routes that are cleared and secured. And by, and by that, we mean they are free of mines, they're free of enemy. We can bring up uh, more forces and they're gonna soon need uh, you know, resupply, casualty evacuation. They want to be able to do that on routes that are secure. So I, I think that's probably a, a large part of what's going on now. You need dozers, you need heavy equipment, you need sappers who are engineers who can clear obstacles. And then once they get those obstacles cleared, they get those routes cleared, they've got to keep them cleared. So that means that they've got to have forces that will remain on those routes, keep them clear so they can bring up the follow-on forces, more combat forces, and then more support. They're going to, they're going to need more ammunition, more food, more fuel, and then they're going to need to get casualties back to the rear. So I think that's what they're preparing now. Right, and we were, you were actually able to see some of these reinforced dozers there as you were talking about that, Lieutenant General. Also, uh, we have other new video that was released by the F IDF and Hamas, and our team has reviewed these videos. And in them, you also see these armored, armored vehicles that are at the border of Israel and Gaza, and they're near the sea. And the vehicles are seen sort of digging in on the beach and working their way into Gaza. So what does that tell you about the IDF's attempts to gain access into Gaza by the water? I, I think they want multiple axes uh, into the area. Um, by having multiple axes, you really prevent uh, the enemy from concentrating all their resources in one place. They've got to defend several places um, and they, they are limited just like any military force into how many places they can go, what forces they can apply. So they're, they're presenting uh, multiple problems to their enemy, which is what you want to do in an attack like this, so that you can move as, as fast as you can, as, uh, as safely as you can. And also in the air, of course, you know, the IDF says that they've activated this new aero missile defense system for the first time to intercept a missile launch from the Red Sea to Israel. IAF jets also intercepted, as they said here, hostile targets in the Red Sea. And they're saying that they've struck now over 300 targets in Gaza. So how long can Israel sustain this? Well, uh, I, I think the, the aerial part of this campaign, and as you know, you fight a war through a series of campaigns. And uh, we've seen uh, the intelligence campaign is ongoing, the air campaign is ongoing, but I think soon you'll see that the air campaign is going to uh, recede somewhat and then allow the ground campaign to go forward because there's always uh, the risk of fratricide. Uh, they, they don't want that. So they will start using other means of uh, fire support, maybe uh, gunship helicopters or tactical air support. They can use artillery um, so that as you get closer to the enemy and distances start to close down, perhaps some of that air campaign will recede and then other forms of air support uh, will start to take the fort.
We'll be watching for that. And there are, we're hearing now that the Houthis have taken responsibility for the attacks near the Red Sea Tuesday. And separately, the Pentagon press secretary says that there's now been 27 attacks on U.S. forces in Iraq and Syria by these Iran-backed militants since October 17th. Uh, is this a concern given that U.S. officials are having constant anxiety about a wider regional conflict specifically with these Iran-backed entities? One thing I think Secretary Austin has done and the president has done through his own channels is to make very clear um, to Iran and to any other actors out there, uh, don't widen this conflict. And we've got the forces in place, uh, number one, to defend our forces. And I think Admiral Kirby uh, was very clear about that the other day. We are going to defend our forces, um, and, and that is utmost uh, and we are trying to be very clear with other actors in the area. Don't take advantage of the situation. Don't try to uh, widen this conflict uh, because we will be well prepared for that eventuality. Well prepared, Lieutenant General William Troy, thank you so much for your expertise and your time today. We really appreciate it. I want to now bring our big story to our panel. So joining us today is our ABC News contributor and Sirius XM radio host Mike Muse, along with ABC News contributor and former Republican Congresswoman from Virginia, Barbara Comstock, former U.S. Senate candidate and president of Next Gen America, Christina Sinsun Ramirez, and ABC News contributor and former Navy SEAL Commander Eric Ulrich. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. We really appreciate it. And first, uh, Commander to you. As you just listened to that conversation we had there about uh, the concern that this conflict could expand, the concerns about Iran being involved, and I will also share with you um, some of the uh, some words from uh, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin that indicated today at various points the U.S. will strike back if these attacks on our U.S. bases persist. So what's your take? No, uh, thank you, Kana. On the 26th of October, um, we did two strikes on basically Iranian munition facilities, and that was one in self-defense, and two is also to act as a deterrent. But since then, as the secretary highlighted today, U.S. forces have been attacked 27 times in the last two weeks. I think we need to start hitting targets that are a little bit more uh, higher priority and make mm -hmm. it a bit more painful for the Iranians to continue with this activity. Um, just as is right now, our deterrence is not working. Interesting. And Barbara, as we go to you here, we know there's you know funding concerns uh, for Israel, but there's also funding concerns for Ukraine as well. Uh, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin also said today, I can guarantee you that without our support, Putin will be successful. But this proposal from Republicans doesn't have any aid for Ukraine in it. So is it time that they bundle that together? Or what's the next step there for Republicans to get aid to Israel? Does that have to include Ukraine? Um, I, I think it definitely does. And I think the Senate has uh, been very good uh, you know, on a bipartisan basis, uh, tying them together and also putting in border security here in the United States, something that House Republicans have always been very concerned with. So while I know uh, the House proposal that was put forward today only had Israel funding and with that was tying it to a pay for that will never get through the Senate and never get approved, they really do need to get serious. When you see these kind of situations today, the things on the ground, this needs to be put together and move forward quickly. And Christina, to you, uh, the FBI director saying that this war in the Middle East has raised the specter that Americans could be targeted in the U.S. We've already seen these hate crimes. As you know, the six-year-old boy killed. Uh, there's been hate-fueled speech on college campuses. How is the younger generation perceiving these threats? We've seen a lot of division and also a lot of unity at the same time of people coming out and calling and seeing what happened. You know, just several weeks ago, we saw 1,400 Israeli civilians, women, children, violently murdered, show no humanity. And now, a few weeks later, 21,000 Palestinians injured, 8,500 dead, thousands of them are children. And we just saw some of the largest protests we've seen across the country um, and civil disobedience, including in New York, by 
uh, Jewish Voice for Peace calling for a ceasefire. I think we are seeing a tremendous unity at the same time between Jewish and Palestinian communities that want to see an end to the violence. Um, but there is great division. And I think language really matters here that people have mm -hmm. to really honor lives on both sides. And when we don't do that, we foment division um, and violence. And so I think that that's really, really critical. And we need to be doing a lot more of that. Right. And of course, the White House is saying, you know, that the numbers that are coming out of the Palestinian health ministry that is run by Hamas, they say, you know, those numbers may not add up. And the White House is doing all they can to understand more about the numbers of the dead in Gaza. But without question, there has been tremendous civilian casualties there. Uh, and Mike, as we go to you, you know, earlier today, we heard from New York Governor Kathy Hochul that there's actually a person of interest now in custody in connection to anti-Semitic violence and a mass shooting threat at the campus at Cornell. Uh, the FBI putting out a statement. They're aware of these threats. They're working with local authorities. But Mike, do you have an opinion here on what more could be done? Yeah, I think what's going to be interesting is in the conversations with the FBI and the FBI director and listening uh, to Press Secretary Corrine Jean-Pierre yesterday, uh, really talk about how the Department of Justice is going to be looking at uh, to raise these level of instabilities that is happening um, on college university campuses, possibly to a level of a hate crime, um, and really taking it seriously. I think that once the Department of Justice begins to lend its voice to determine how they will begin to investigate and or prosecute uh, these hate crimes on campus, and how they will attach possibly, uh, let me edit that, how they will investigate possible assaults or intimidation or harassment on campus. And then if they will escalate that to a hate crime, I think then you will start to see measured uh, temperament when it comes to people exercising free speech, just as long as it doesn't create undue harm to others. Mm -hmm. Right, and again, you know, we spoke with someone from the Anti-Defamation League today, and they said that, you know, instances of anti-Semitic rhetoric or threats are up 400% since this attack on Israel and that 15% of those are happening on college campuses. So it's certainly something to continue to unpack here. Thank you so much, Mike, Barbara, Christina, and Eric. We appreciate your time. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.